Today, the South Bay is remembering two boys who were murdered 30 years ago. Jonathan Sellers and Charlie Kiever were killed in the Otay River Valley. Fox 5's Christian Cazares joins us live from Imperial Beach with more on this special tribute. Hi, Christian. Hi, Marie and Andrew. Good afternoon to both of you. That's right. Three decades. It's been three, 30 years since uh, Jonathan and Charlie were killed and their bodies were discovered here along the Otai River. Well, today, families say today it's all about a celebration of life and they have a very important message they want everyone to hear. My baby, he will be turning 40 years old in 22 days. He didn't get to see that. Melina Sellers Phillips is talking about her son, Jonathan, who was killed three decades ago. He was nine years old at the time. It was very, very, very difficult. I went through some very hard times for many, 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 many years. 13-year-old Charlie Kiever, also a victim. His mother sharing with us the conversation she had with him before he went out on his bike. Por favor, Charlie, be careful. He's a lot of people around he me dijo, oh mom don't worry the boys were never seen again two days later their bodies were discovered along the otai river bank and according to police scott erskine accused of the crime he later died from covid 19 complications in prison Thirty years later, a new day of hope and awareness. Both families pushing forward on a foundation in honor of the boys and even opened the doors to the Jonathan Sellers and Charlie Kiever Outdoor Educational Activity Center with one goal in mind. You know, a lot of times we find ourselves in situations where we're not comfortable, but we decide to stay and then we realize we really shouldn't have. We should have left a long, long time ago when that feeling first came. And so that's what the foundation does. It keeps, teaches the children, keep your distance, stay alert, and when you don't know what to do, always fly away. On Monday, local leaders and community members stepping up to show their support to the families at the site now dedicated to the young boys. A tribute with song and prayer. Once again, in your name we pray. Amen. While highlighting the importance of creating a safe public space for the youth. I think that Jonathan would be laughing and Charlie also and just be very proud. They're like, wow, my face is on the rock. <laughs> you know? Well, both mothers tell me aside from losing their sons, they say one of the hardest parts about this investigation was not knowing who committed this crime. That's why they say they will continue to fight to spread awareness for hopefully this will never, ever happen again. We're live in Imperial Beach, Christian Casares, Fox 5 News. Charles. So I know I already introduced myself to you. You guys, there's a lot of people driving by, a lot of services going on, a lot of people around. So Jonathan and Charles were actually on their way to go ride bikes, but they stopped at, or they just so happened to stop at a store, like a flower shop. Jonathan, which is buried over there, kind of where that guy's walking from, he goes into the store and he asks the person at the store if they have roses because he wanted to get some for his mom. So then afterwards they stopped at a pet shop. And I think one day y'all, I'm going to bring Max or Bear out here. I probably might go get them after this and bring them out here maybe in another video so that they can you know see them see the dogs i know they might enjoy that but let's hop into the spare box session guys again there are folks all around us today is a busy day for the resting the ones that are being newly entered so yeah i'm gonna set up real quick hey charles my name is tiffany i heard about your story I'm so, so sorry, sweetheart, about what happened to you and your friend. I'm so sorry, but I know you're at peace right now. I know that you're with God, probably riding your bikes on the other side, racing each other. <laughs> I would love to have a conversation with you guys, or with you and maybe then your friend Jonathan, if it's okay with you. Um. And also, y'all, his dad did pass away in 2001. So if your dad's around, maybe you can 
allow us to talk to your son if it's okay with you i would love to ask your permission first instead of just jumping in but i'm going to go ahead and turn on the device i have it allows me to speak to you i cannot see you but i know you can see me and you can hear me so don't be afraid to speak to me through my spirit box Charles, I would love to know if you remember anything about that day. I would love to chat with you if that's okay. Are you with your dad? Charles, do you remember anything about that day? Most of it. Do you have? Do you do you remember if you had any weird feelings that morning, or did it just feel like a, re a regular day to you? I'm sorry y'all it's kind of hard to hear because we're literally right next to a freeway so just let me know what you hear in the comments kind of help me out can you tell me what it is that you remember about that morning Charles so people said or witnesses said that you guys stopped at a flower shop to get roses is that true they also said that you guys stopped by a pet shop as well to see the dogs and stuff do you like dogs i have two of them <laughs> Um, it went off, y'all. Hold on. I'm sorry, Charlie. That's his short. That's the short, or that's his, uh, what they call him for Charles. That's his nickname, Charlie. Y'all, why can't I talk today? <laughs> Is it okay if I call you Charlie? Is there anything that you would have did different in that day, Charlie? <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Somebody walking. Okay, y'all. We're back. Sorry about that. Charlie, I would love to know if you're with uh, Jonathan right now. Are you with Jonathan? Charlie, are you the same age as the day you passed? You were only nine. Or are you older? Did it say 40 something? Yeah. 
Do you and Jonathan still go for rides on the other side? Bike rides? Charlie, who came to meet you when you passed away? So we are you at peace, Charlie? Are you aware that your killer died in prison? <laughs> Do you still visit your family, Charlie? I know you do. All right, Charlie. Well, thank you for your time, love. I appreciate you. I hope you could. Ooh, it's a bug. It's a lot of bugs out here. I hope you continue to rest well, Charlie. I'm going to go on over and talk to uh, your friend, okay? All right, sweetheart. Talk to you later. You know, when they called me and um, I heard him say that he was dead, I was shocked. I didn't know what to say. I had no words. And it was just quiet. And then finally I got out. How did he die? And he told me that he couldn't tell me. They didn't know. But I'd find out later on that um, that afternoon. And it was overwhelming. I was just, I, and I, and again, long pauses because I didn't know what to say. My emotions was all over the place. I started crying because, again, it's just so much. And then I just felt totally confused because my emotions were everywhere. And then I was glad that he was dead. And then I was, I started feeling guilty as a Christian. You know, I've never been glad that somebody's dead before. So it was all this mix of emotions going on that I had to call my pastor because I, you know, I, I just didn't know how to, you know, how to feel about this. And he thanked the Lord for Pastor Trent at North Coast Community Church. Absolutely fabulous. He helped me to just process it and tell me it was okay. You know, I called one of the members of our prayer group, you know, Beverly from the same church, and she's like, it's okay, you know. I don't blame you. It's normal, you know, and, and, and this is fine, you know, to feel this way, this relief. And it just helped me because as a Christian, you know, I've come too far walking with the Lord to lose it now over the death of him. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything wrong. My salvation means too much to me. And the Lord is the only thing that got me through this, this got me this far. You know, people talk about my strength. No, it's my trust. It's my faith in God that got me through. And I don't want to lose it now. It means so much to me. And um, so I'm thankful that I have had this time now to process it and to talk to different ones that could help support me through my mixed emotions and the guilt that I realized I don't have to feel guilty. I can be glad that he is no longer here. I can be glad that Maria and I don't have to worry about getting another phone call about him being up for appeal or anything else. It's over. And I thank the Lord for that. Let's hop right into it, guys. See if we could talk to Jonathan. I already introduced myself. Um, it's not really nowhere for me to sit, though. I don't mind sitting on the grass. I don't mind. I just hope y'all can see me. Yeah, I think I'm good. I'm just gonna have to make it work. Hey, Jonathan. Tell me not to be a punk. <laughs> My name is Tiffany. I 
come in all love and light. As you already know, I've come to worst scenarios like yours. I heard about your story, you and your friend. I just got done talking to Charlie. And, uh, yeah, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. In fact, I wanted to also leave you as this. I just want you to know that you're will always be remembered and loved on this side and I'm so sorry about what happened to you y'all I might have to move y'all closer because y'all won't be able to hear the spirit box because I don't want it to be loud and I have to turn it down because there are people visiting so they're literally right next to me hold on Jonathan, are you here? What the heck? It seems like it's a lot of stuff going on today. The bugs keep bothering me. Usually when I come out here, it's not this many bugs. But today, it's a lot of them. But we gonna get through this session one way or another. Ain't that right, Jonathan? Uh, okay, here we go. Jonathan, are you here? I just got done talking to your friend Charlie. Are you with him right now? I just wanted to tell you I'm so sorry about what happened to you. I know I said that already a couple of times, but I really am. Do you feel anything could have went differently the start of that morning? Yes. How? Do you feel like if you guys would have waited for Ellen, you guys would have been safe? I know that you were very smart at school. What's another thing that you love doing? Were you a straight A student, Jonathan? I seen all your awards. What was your favorite color of your bike? Can you tell me the color that you have now? Are y'all still riding y'all bikes together on the other side? Are you at peace knowing that your killer died in prison? You know your mom started a foundation for you. Do you see do you see everything she's doing with that? I know you're proud of her, right? I know. Wow.
did you guys get any feeling that you guys needed to head back to the house after a while after being out before everything happened so i know a lot of you guys already know jonathan had a twin sister so yeah he had a twin sister um i'm gonna put her picture up on the screen uh jonathan i know you're watching over your sister are you aware of the monument that your parents built in a uh, memory of you guys yeah people go and ride their bikes and they have um yeah people go down there and they ride their bikes and they get together in memory y'all can you go down there and ride with them Jonathan, I hope you're at peace, buddy. Do you like the green bracelet I left you? Do you mind if I come back and talk to you, buddy? No? I have a feeling that you're excited to have me here, is that right? <laughs> I know that before I started, I had like a very excited feeling. Was that you? I moved it. Hey. You know, your mom really loved something about you. Um, I believe it was your eyes. She said your eyes were just very bright and full of life in her interview. Do you know that? All right, well, I'm going to come and visit you again, okay? I appreciate your time. Oh, there's people walking. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. I know the case was already solved, y'all. I already know that. But I didn't even know about this story. So, you know, maybe it'll bring some awareness, you know, about him and Charlie's story, the foundation. Um, you know what I mean? Jonathan had a big family. He had sisters and brothers that loved him dearly. They loved you. And they still do. And I know you're always on their mind, Jonathan. You too, Charlie. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this other bracelet for Charlie right here. I hope you like it. Rest well. It started out as just an ordinary day in San Diego back in March 1993. Melina Sellers and her six children were all busy doing their normal Saturday morning chores. Just an ordinary day that took a horrific twist. We called ourselves the Brady Bunch. I had three boys and three girls. I was a single parent at the time. My husband and I had um, separated. And usually every Saturday, we 
I always had the kids clean. That was our cleaning day. Because as a young girl, I had to clean the house when we woke up on Saturday. And that's what my kids did. I remember Jonathan was doing his room at the time when Charlie came to the door. I heard the doorbell ring and I go to the door and open the door and there was Charlie and everything and with his bike and um, he was asked if John could come out. So I go back to the room to see where John was in this cleaning process and he says, Mom, is the room clean enough? And I told him, no, John, this room is not clean. And so I go back out and I tell Charlie, he's still cleaning, it'll be a little bit. And so then John comes running out of the room, Mom, is it clean enough, is it clean enough, come check, come check. And I go back to the room and it still wasn't clean enough. But then I told him, um, John, you could go ahead, you can leave, it's, it's clean enough. But it really wasn't. <laughs> I really wasn't happy with it, but I told him it was clean enough. And um, I walked him outside, and then looking at Charlie's bike, Charlie had just gotten a new bike mm. for his birthday, which is in November, November 1st. And I looked at um, Charlie's bike, and I had just, my sister had just purchased the bike for my, for my Jonathan, because his birthday was 22 days away. He was gonna turn 10. And I knew I couldn't afford to buy him and his twin sister a bike. And my sister had went and she had found this bike and um, she gave it to him as his birthday gift. Yeah. And so it was a happy moment for you in, in that morning. It was. It was. Tell me about Jonathan. Jonathan was very happy, very loving, you know. Um, what I remember the most is his beautiful, beautiful eyes and his wet kisses. You know, he would kiss you, I gave you wet kisses and stuff. That was Jonathan. Um, just a very happy boy. He loved playing basketball. That was his favorite. You know, he was going to grow up and be a professional basketball player. He was also going to be an architect, you know. Oh, very good. Because <laughs> he likes to build things and make things. And, and he was just very helpful. Jonathan was one that wanted to make everybody happy. You know, he tried to see how it could be to where everybody was getting what they wanted, you know. A special kid. Yeah, he really was. And how about Charlie? Charlie's house was the house that had the swimming pool. And so, of course, all the kids wanted to mm. go to Charlie's house where they can get the swimming pool because we didn't have a swimming pool. <laughs> Pretty special, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and he, and he had all the, um, by him being an only child that was at home, the other, his um, brother and sister, they were grown and married already. Um, so he had all the latest, you know, games and Nintendos and stuff, so the kids like to go over there oh, and that. hang out with him and yeah. stuff, you know, which is um, why when the boys didn't, when, when Jonathan didn't come home in time for dinner, you know, I um, told my daughter, you know, call. Maria's house mm -hmm. and stuff, which is Charlie's mother, and tell John it's time to come home. And I just knew he'd be over there playing or doing something. And it, the phone went to the voicemail and stuff, so he left a message. And then it wasn't until Maria came to the house. His mother, Charlie's Charlie's mother. Charlie's mother came to the house. And that's when I realized that there was something wrong because I knew that, you know, John was at their house. Of course, John is with Charlie. Yeah. And Maria came over to the house to get Charlie. So I knew something was wrong. They wouldn't be out, you right. know. And John's always home for dinner. He knows dinner's at five o'clock, and he is. He comes running home mm -hmm. to make sure he's there mm -hmm. in time. And this you is know. every mother's fear. Yeah. The pit of your stomach, you fear whatever. Whatever, even if they walk in five seconds later, yeah. you all, all mothers feel the same, that, that horrible feeling for a moment. So take us back to the day that it happened. Uh, the boys were on their way to a destination on their yeah, bike? When Charlie came over to the house to, um, to get Jonathan, I thought they were just gonna go out for a bike ride. I didn't know until later that after everything had happened, my son Alton, my oldest son, he told me that the plan was Charlie was going to go, Alton, Charlie was going to go with Alton and Jonathan and all the boys. They were all going to go together on this adventure, and that's what they called it, an adventure. And um, but Alton had asked Charlie to wait until he got back home because he plays the violin and he had a concert that that morning, mm -hmm. and so he wasn't there when Charlie came. And that's when Charlie left with um, with Jonathan. But evidently, they had went to rallies to get themselves a hamburger and to get that bigger, better burger meal. And so I know he had a wonderful meal because my son Jonathan loved to eat. <laughs> and um, but they also stopped by a flower shop. 
um, and the florist told the police that the little black boy came inside while the little white boy stayed outside with the bikes and asked, you know, how much it cost for a rose because they wanted to get a rose for their mother. And they told, she told them, and then they left and they continued their bike ride. Um, again, later I found out that they actually rode on the bike path, which is still there now. And then and this was near your house. This no, actually, it's not near the house. It's really a good distance away. You know, I like I said, I had no idea. There was no way I would have ever, you know, approved of them riding there. You know, being so far from home, yeah. I assumed they was going to be in the neighborhood. You know, stay in the neighborhood. Charlie lived just a couple streets away mm -hmm. and stuff, so I assume they're going to be up there. Mm -hmm. Then there is a park that's not too far away where the boys go and play basketball, also in the same, you know, in the neighborhood. And that's what, what I assumed they would be doing. Um, again, had no idea that they would be riding way up to where Rallies was at and then on the bike path. And um, so it was after everything happened that I found out. And how did you find out? When Jonathan didn't come back home that evening um, and, and Maria showed up at the door looking for Charlie, I knew something wrong was wrong. And so I asked Maria if I could ride with her. So we went to a couple of their friends' house together. And then, um, you know, we decided we're going back home and we're gonna call the police because we know our kids. And um, my sisters had then showed up at the house too because they had no idea. And then I told them, you know, John's missing. Um, by the time when the police finally got there, me and my son Alton and my nephew um, Arthur, we got in the car because my son Alton was going to take us to some places that they know that the boys frequent. And we were going different places. But then it started to rain. And when it started to rain, that's when I just, I knew, I just knew that my son was dead. And so I called the family meeting and I asked the kids, you know Jonathan loves you, right? And they said, yep, we do. I said, do you think Jonathan knows that you love him? And they all said, yeah. And I said, so you know, no matter what happens, we know that Jonathan knows that he is loved mm -hmm. and we know that he knows that we love him and we know that he loved us. And um, all my, said my sisters were there, but I just felt it was so important to prepare the kids, you know? And then after that, after that meeting and stuff, I, um, we just hugged and kissed. And then I went back to my room. The next day, the police came to the house. And um, I don't remember exactly what was said. Um, they talked to my family and they said something. They said something to me. And I th think they said they may have found something. I don't remember exactly because I passed out. Mm -hmm. I, you know, don't. Mm -hmm. It was just too much to take. Um, but I know that the way my family, when I remember the way my family found out was we had did an interview with the news and to tell them that Jonathan was missing and we were hoping that they would put it on the news. That way people would say, you know, yes, we saw these boys here and there or whatever. And um, so my family was waiting for the news to come on. And that's when it came on TV, saying that they found their, the boy's body. Mm. Mm. And they were... My family was in the, um, they were in the family room and I was back in my bedroom in bed and all I heard was this screaming, you know. Um, they were just screaming and so I just started screaming because I just, you know, I knew it was like confirmation and it's just so hard. Um, and then um, John's father came into the bedroom and he said, you know, our baby's dead, our baby's dead. And I'm, oh, oh, it's just so hard. It was so hard. Um, and that, that was, you know, I, when the police came to the house to tell us, I remember, you know, my sister told me that she was, she was really upset because of how the kids found out and how we all found right. out and stuff. Um, but then I knew that 
I still kept thinking in my mind that they, he must have drowned because mm -hmm. Jonathan couldn't swim. Mm -hmm. But Jonathan was one of those smart little boys. He knew he couldn't swim, so he never went near the water. <laughs> You know, but maybe something happened. Maybe, maybe I th my thought was Jonathan must have drowned and maybe Charlie drowned trying to save Jonathan, right. you know. Um, and then the police, and they told me that they were, they were, they think they were murdered. And I said, well, you know, cause my mind could not comprehend that, mm -hmm. you know. I said, what would make you say that? And um, he said, I don't think they could have done that to themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm still thinking, no, no, you must be mistaken. They, they must have. I'm still thinking in my mind they, they drowned. Um, and I guess part of me really didn't want to know. I didn't really want to know all the details. And I know I didn't want to know the details. Because um, it was too hard just dealing with the fact that he was dead, let alone, and then telling me somebody actually killed him on purpose. You know, purposely killed him. And then um, Maria, she would come to me and she'd say, you know, she's the one that would let me know what was going on. It was just easier, I guess, for me to hear it from her. Mm -hmm. And she would say, Melina, you have to know this. You have to know this. And this is what happened. And so she would tell me some things and stuff, you know. Um, and she said, you know, the, the you know, it, the boys were molested and, 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 and they, you know, and she said that there was burn marks. It looks like burn marks and all this stuff. And it was just, it was just too much. It was just so much to handle, to, to even think about. Cause I didn't want to think about it. Right. You know, I just didn't want to. Um, it must have seemed like it, it, it went on forever while this time was, although maybe you just was. didn't have any sense of time during that time. It was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. It was a nightmare that I just wanted to wake up from. Yeah. You know, that I could not wake up from. You know, I I told my mom, maybe maybe Jonathan really wasn't here. Maybe maybe none of this ever happened. It's just a dream. It's just a dream, you know. Because mom came from Ohio to be with me. And she told me, no, baby, it's it happened. It's real. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. You know. Now, um, children are really naive and yet they're very resilient and you had other children to take care of and so throughout all of this you remained a mom and your kids were I guess on vacation at this point point. Yeah. and so you had to keep track of them all day and try to hold things together how was that for you well they were on the you know, they were on their school break and um, actually it was really difficult because I was so depressed. Yeah. I was so depressed that I had to force myself to get up, you know, to go and be with them and to let them know that I'm there for them. And they were trying to protect me, so they didn't want to talk about right. Jonathan, you know, mm -hmm. being dead. They didn't want to talk about it, but yet they had questions, and I knew they did. And so I told them if they want to talk about it, it's okay. You know, I'm okay. I, we could talk about it and stuff. But um, but it was difficult. I had, Jonathan died 22 days before he turned 10 years old, his 10th birthday. He has a twin sister. I had to have a birthday party. They always had a birthday party. I could not not have a birthday party for her, you know. And um, so my girlfriend, fortunately, she came over. And Jennifer wanted to go to the beach. She wanted a beach party. And I just didn't have the energy mm -hmm. to go to the beach. So my girlfriend came over and she painted a beach scene on the sliding glass doors. <laughs> she got a surfboard from somewhere oh, that's and had all, you know, Jennifer friends come with their bathing suits and stuff Very on good. and she got a little tub, you know, a little um little pool, a little, pool, a little pool, pool, yeah, pool. a little portable pool, and set Very water good. in there, and so she was able to let Jennifer have her beach party, oh, that's great. but it was at the house and stuff, wow. so, you That's know, what friends are for. That's what friends are for. Yeah, I was very fortunate. So, the grieving process can be complicated, and I know that there were probably lots of levels that you went through, but you are to me a model of how to handle grief and, I, and not all other people handle it this well um, it's been how many years now 
20, almost 21, 21 years. 21 years. March 27th will make 21 years. I'm just wondering if you can help us understand the stages that you went through over the years and how you handled it. I would say the number one thing was my faith in God, knowing that even though I didn't understand this, I knew that He understood and that one day I will understand. And that's one thing that got me through. And then my children, looking at them and knowing they needed me, I felt that it would have been selfish of me to just think about me, you know, because they lost a brother. Mm -hmm. You know, Jennifer lost her twin. You know, my youngest daughter, baby Tammy, she was only three years old. She lost her bigger brother. She'll never get to know. You know, Michael lost his brother. Alton lost his best friend and his brother. You know, and, and my Natasha, you know, she was um, she was 11 years old. She's just hitting those preteens, and it was just so hard for her, mm -hmm. so devastating mm -hmm. for her. And so by just focusing on each one of my children, each one of my living children, that gave me the strength to do what I had to do. But um, honestly, my plan was, Lord Jesus, just help me to get to my kids being 18. My baby girl turned 18, then I could die. Uh -huh. I just wanted to die. I wanted to die, but I couldn't because my kids needed me and I wouldn't do that to them. You know, I'm, I'm their mother and they needed a mother. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that's what got me through. I was like, I'm gonna do whatever it mm -hmm. takes to see to it that they have a happy life. But my baby girl turned 18, then I could die. But she turned 18 she and you didn't die. <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, you know what happened. <laughs> my baby turned 18 and my now husband asked me to marry him at 18 when she turned 18. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> and um, we got married when she turned 19. Oh, so, yeah, my life just totally changed. That's and, good. But also what happened, what um, changed things a lot for me, just not just focusing on my babies, but when Chelsea King was murdered, that was um, when she was killed um, and they were looking for her body, it was close to the 17th anniversary of Jonathan's murder, and it hurt me so bad. I just cried. It hurt me so bad, but I want, but it, it was different now. I wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. And in wanting to do something, I decided I'm going to go out and help look for her body. And I prayed the whole time, <laughs> but I actually went out and helped look for Chelsea's body. Mm -hmm. And I knew I really wanted to do something. And that's when I decided I really want to get involved with the, um, the foundation before um, I wasn't as involved. My ex-husband was more, you know. Um, and what foundation are you talking oh, about? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, wanted to get involved with the Jonathan Sellers and Charlie Kieber Foundation. Okay, tell us about that. Okay, the, the Jonathan Sellers Charlie Kieber Foundation, it's a nonprofit that my ex-husband and I started, but he was more doing it, mm -hmm. <laughs> everything. I told him, whatever you need me to do, just let me know, but I was more hands off because it was, I wasn't ready, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I just couldn't handle it yet. And that was and, his way of handling and it. And that was his way of handling it, yes. And so after, when Chelsea went missing and I decided I wanted to do something, and I actually went out to help look for her body, and that's the same day that they actually found her body. Mm -hmm. um, diving back, I was crying and praying, and that's when I called and I asked, you know, my ex-husband, I asked him, you know, how was the foundation? How's things going? I really want to do something. And I got involved, and he had been sick and stuff, having problems and everything, health problems. And that's when I really got involved and said, you know, I'd like to really step up. He goes, you know what, if you could handle it, that'd be wonderful. And that's when I started, you know, our mission was to, which he first started, was to pr promote the safety and well-being of children and to um, then support family that's lost a loved one through murder. And we want to educate children, educate the community on how to stay safe in, in this environment, in this world that we're in, because we need that. And that's been my focus, and now I feel like that's how I've dealt with my grieving, because I found my purpose. Mm -hmm. Once I was able to really get involved and stepped up and learn what, we're, what the foundation really is about, I really wanted to do something, and it's like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And then you learned that you were a much stronger person than you thought you were. Yeah, I didn't know that, but yeah. I guess I am. <laughs> so, your 
goal is to educate uh, and help other families in this situation. And so what have you done in order to do that? What kinds of education do you do? Well, we have the the JSIC, which is JSCK Safety Program. And the Child Safety Program, we actually go into elementary schools or churches or any place where children congregate. And we teach kids, we do a little skit. It's a, um, a performance using a cat and a bird, teaching kids to be safe, you know, giving them the tools that they need to stay safe. And the primary lesson is to keep your distance, stay alert, and fly away or leave and that's what we're teaching kids but we're doing it in a way that's not scary you know but they definitely get the message so this can be for what age group elementary age kids like so third second grade from second grade up to sixth grade really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they understand the message we also um, we do a, a question period afterwards where we ask them questions and everything and then we let them ask us questions just to make sure they got it Very good. and they got it Very oh, it's, good. Great. It's, it's wonderful and that's not all you've done for Jonathan you have other things that you do yes we also host a annual candlelight vigil and it's to um, to remember those loved ones that have been lost through murder so any parent can any, go with that any way. parent any person if you lost if you your friend was murdered if your co-worker was murdered if you just know someone just supporting it's just to support families mm. that's lost a loved one mm. so it's a community event where everyone is invited and we can um, we have a memorial table where we share pictures of our loved ones and it's a time that um, for those of us that's lost someone we can actually remember them with other people that's in the same situation and for those that have not lost someone you could support someone that has lost a loved one through murder hmm. so it's a chance to talk about them and to remember them and it's okay and then we also use that opportunity to network to talk to each mm -hmm. other you, you may be um, maybe the murder of, of your loved one haven't been found yet and mine may have been found but we haven't started the trial and someone else's may have gone through the trial and so we're at different stages so we can learn how to best go through these different stages when it comes to a loved one being murdered. Tell us about the bike-a-thon. Okay, we have a annual bike ride that's a fundraiser um, for the foundation, for the Jonathan Sellers and Charlie Kiefer Foundation, and it's called the Ride for Safety San Diego. And with the bike ride, we're actually riding on the bike path that the boys rode, rode on their last ride. Um, it also goes past the Jonathan Sellers Charlie Keeper Outdoor Educational Activity Center, which was also made and named in, in memory of the boys. Um, so that people that come to the bike ride have the opportunity to get off their bikes and actually appreciate this beautiful outdoor education center. Um, there's telescopes and things there for people can see the Coronado um, Bridge and look at the bay. And it's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful area um, with the Nautilus on the ground. And there's these, they call them tears of the ocean mm. that glow in the dark. It looks oh, like stars cool. on the ground. It's just absolutely beautiful. And it's just, again, a, a, a chance that will, uh, the bike ride encourages families to come together, because it's not a race, it's just a leisurely ride. Bring families together, bring your grandkids, your children, and just go on this nice, lovely, safe bike ride. And it's a way for us to raise money for that we can continue our um, safety program because there is no charge to the schools when we do the safety program and the schools can just call us let us know what day they'd like for us to come and we the actors go and they do this wonderful performance at no charge very nice and that's how we're able to do it at no charges because we raise funds in other ways I don't want money to be a reason why kids don't get this and very very important message of but you do uh, take donations yes and so they would send donations to the foundation yes and so we'll have the website up on the screen I want to thank you so much for coming and sharing this story with us today Melina y'all so I had to get directions because even the people that worked here in like this little coffee shop
didn't even know about the story. They didn't, they never heard about this story. So they were like, what? I'm like, yeah. So we're gonna walk the bike trail. The, the young ladies that told me or helped me out, they were just like, just walk the bike trail. You might run into the memorial. So that's what we're gonna do right now, y'all. It can't be far away, like we're right here. So I'm gonna switch the camera around and we're just gonna walk, y'all. Um, as y'all know, before I switch the camera around, as y'all know, Jonathan and Charlie were just taking a bike ride after they had came from, uh, you know, the pet store and the flower shop. So they were just, I don't even know which way to go. Have the bridge right there we have this and we have that um dang. i don't know i don't know if that's it in the distance no it's probably along this path oh wow they have this roped off or I wonder, like, it's crazy to know that someone did this to these young boys, you know? It's crazy. But anyways, Charlie and Jonathan were just out for a bike ride. As people are doing over here, they're riding bikes and stuff. It's normal, you know what I mean? But as yeah, y'all know, Alan, I think I'm saying his name right, Alan, the older brother, was supposed to come out here instead. In the beginning, he was supposed to come out here, but he wasn't home yet. So, um, Charlie ended up, I, Charlie ended up coming out here instead. Sorry y'all about the wind. I think if we keep walking, we'll run into it. Is that, I think we found it. I think we might have found it, y'all. Yeah, we found it. All right, so yeah, they ended up just never coming home. Like, that was their last bike ride together. Um, wow, this is really, really heartbreaking. And I think this is why I don't do stories like this is because it just, it's, it's, it breaks your heart to know that there are people in the world that really don't care about taking another life and hurting another human being especially a child so like i said y'all this video is very difficult to do it's not easy it's not fun um so yeah i'm just gonna walk around and kind of give y'all a view of what i see and yeah i hope y'all enjoy this video let the love go up and the head go down
RIP guys. I wonder if these people that are eating there even know about this spot. Like, it's literally a restaurant right over there. And just like the ladies in the cafe shop I just went to to ask about this, they had no clue. They had no clue. Maybe some of them might. But yeah. Recipes, guys. This is heavy. This is so heavy. to know that one of these pass were the last pass that little Charlie and little Jonathan rode for the last time. And they never knew. This could possibly be the path that they took on their last ride. The sad part about it is Jonathan's mom said it started uh, raining that evening that her son didn't come back home and she knew immediately without anyone telling her without the cops notifying her she said she she said she already knew that her little boy had been you know that he has he had lost his life that he had died All they wanted to do was go for a bike ride. Jonathan 